Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to many of us. Uh, welcome to CEO Talk, a series conducted by CFC TV, where a CEO narrates a story and shares their learning and their success of building a great brand. So today we have with us Shrikant Patil, the CEO and Managing Director of DT Ali. So Shrikant contributed to sustainable business value creation in Fortune 500 companies across 15 countries, and he has extensive uh, experience in business, digital strategy, and multi-year business transformation. Welcome, Sri Gitanth, and uh, how are you doing today? Wonderful. Uh, you know, a lot of exciting events have happened over the last uh, three weeks. So, just settling down, just absorbing and, you know, winding down for the year. I mean, at least I was planning to wind down, but uh, as an entrepreneur, you, you do not have that privilege. So, now, in fact, starting the planning for 2024 and very excited uh, phase for us. Uh, very, very important milestones uh, achieved over the last quarter. And, uh, you know, the expectation is growing now. Sounds interesting. I think I'll be asking a lot of questions around it. 2024 looks to be very promising uh, for the fintech industry. So, uh, Shrikan, reflecting on your uh, journey as CEO over the years, what pivotal movements or, uh, you know, decisions have played a crucial role in shaping your personal leadership style? It's it's an interesting, uh, you know, the, the way you position this question, I, I really like it because, uh, you know, over a period of time, uh, as you operate through multiple organizations, right, and with Accenture, I used to lead digital strategy for India. Yeah, I worked with BCG and Oliver Wyman. Uh, before that, I was with IBM. Uh, I believe every organization offers you certain things to learn as well as the environment gives you an opportunity to try different leadership styles. And I can tell you that the most rewarding uh, leadership or the opportunity for you to build and create impact for people is via entrepreneurship. Yeah. So for me, uh, it was one of the journeys which was very important. Uh, and, you know, we all go through that phase saying, you know, what is that we are looking forward and I've gone through the transformations, I've gone through the phases where we help the CEOs, CXOs, board members to take, make decisions. And uh, sometimes you want to solve the biggest problems which uh, the world is facing. And I, fortunate, I was fortunate to find this problem for helping access to finance for small medium enterprises which are powering uh, the world today. A very few of us know that 50% of GDP is coming from there. Uh, you know, two third of jobs are coming from there, as well as 90, 95% of the enterprises across the world are small, medium enterprises. So I would say that is the, that was the point where, uh, you know, I, I really wanted to build an organization and building that leadership style, which is aligned to uh, something we create a global organization. You talk about the lending part, uh, is it the tap lending or is it the equity lending? What like? So lending as a overall small medium enterprises is a sector which is uh, which has huge gap. So last year the World Bank had published report of around five point two trillion dollars as a gap. Uh, today this year they are yet to publish, but it is hitting five point seven trillion now, and it is growing. So my question to the guys, uh, you know, with uh, uh, who are who are running some of these reports was, what can we do? about it and can we do something together about it so the large corporations somehow get a fair share of lending uh, if i go back to the banking portfolio and say how much of that is bank giving to corporates it could be the uh, of the order of 90 percent of their portfolio is distributed yeah. across the large corporates yeah and small medium enterprises get a very very small share yeah, and that is where we want to help uh small medium enterprises we want to build the economy. We want to create that foundational layer uh, where we can provide this opportunity for them to grow and become large corporations of tomorrow. Okay. So as as the CEO and the managing director of uh, DGLE, could you just share the funding uh, or in fact the founding stories uh, and uh, the mission that uh, drives DGLE in the fintech space? So I, as I mentioned to you, I went through the journey of uh, consulting and, you know, a lot of consulting organizations provided me the opportunity to see large scale transformation. I was also involved in banking transformations, non-banking transformations, uh, airlines industry, government, 
and you know in the middle east i was part of one of the largest programs ever uh, to transform the nation and uh, wow. some of these uh, provided me the opportunity to look at this particular sector saying is this something we can solve for and if you look at uh, one of the main uh, challenges which small medium enterprises face is that they do not have tr enough trust in by the ecosystem player so when they go to a bank they are not trusted well when they go to uh, a partner who they want to collaborate across the boundaries they need to establish their trust and while i was doing a lot of consulting or with some of the large banks on building their small medium enterprises portfolio the on one side you see that smes want the loan but on the other side banks also want to build this portfolio and they are not able to build it uh while it is one of the most profitable portfolios uh, which banks could have uh and fastest growing portfolios they're finding it hard and then i came across one very interesting paper which was written uh, by bank of england uh -huh. which talks about a symmetries of data and that kind of opened up my uh eyes to an the way it is it is more like proving the hypothesis for me that the bank of england is writing about exact idea which i was thinking in my mind and then then it converted into a, a platform where we said how can we minimize the symmetries of data where the borrower is aware of many more data points as compared to the lender and this asymmetry is causing the trust lack of yeah. trust and we built this platform and we didn't want to build this platform which is based on the rule based engine because it is again uh, fundamentally if you just do rule based engine then you are you are not solving or you are not creating yeah. structure yeah so we created an ai based engine ai based platform for this and uh, we also looked at a lot of alternative data which is available uh, we tried it with few customers and we were the results were phenomenal so we said yes this is the way forward for us to uh, help small medium enterprises but at the same time large banks financial institutions and across the ecosystem if we are able to create this trust absolutely i think uh, credibility assurance is very critical and uh, you know you, you mentioned about ai based instead of rule based i i would like to still know more about it uh, you know probably in the subsequent question so um uh, shikan the fintech is uh, you know rapidly evolving sector and what specific areas within fintech does uh dgli specialize in and uh, how does the company stay ahead uh, in the curve with the the innovation and market trend full uh you know coming fresh from singapore fintech festival i have a lot <laughs> yeah, we have limited time uh so we will i will talk about some of the trends which we are seeing right yeah one is definitely if you if we talk about fintech in 2018 80% of the fintech would be about payments and then over a period of time we all talked about how can the innovation and in payment continue uh and and that was the flavor of the uh you know season for for a few years now what has happened is lending as well as the entire uh investments those are picking in and to a large extent what is happening is initially people thought that payment lending investments are separate parts uh and you have to deal with them separately but what we are seeing is we are seeing the convergence of payment lending and multiple other fields which are centered around the customer and you saw the first revolution was about the customer consumer internet revolution where people got access to mobile phones internet was you know i mean if you if you know how the journey started right you know Uh, we experienced it uh, actually can we have experienced the you know we the gen generation is for sure yeah. experienced that yeah absolutely. and i speak about that with my with my friends saying you know we seen where there was no internet to the transition to internet and understanding the value was very important absolutely. so the first revolution was about the consumer revolution yeah the second revolution we saw a lot of organizations consulting organizations including my former employers they focused on digitizing the large corporates yeah now what has happened is over a period of time a segment which was ignored which was small medium enterprises yep. and digitization of small medium enterprises now at this juncture i can tell you for two decades from now digitization of small medium enterprises and their integration with the large enterprises and the ecosystem related to consumer internet and the consumer internet revolution is going to stay as one of the very important aspects Absolutely. so we want to focus on that 
and DJLI wants to provide this. Uh, if I if I can talk about you know India Stack, India Stack has the layers which is identity layer, payment layer, and consent layer. Fantastic innovation within uh, India Stack, and you know now multiple countries are now borrowing uh, the stack. For, for them, you know, I uh, we know that neighboring countries are now picking up on saying, hey, can I use that SaaS uh, as a SaaS platform? And this is a phenomenal pride for all of us. At the same time, uh, we know that there is one layer which is missing in India stack, which is the trust layer. Yes, absolutely. You in, in, the, in the, when in, internet was conceptualized, one of the fundamental layers which was not made as an inherent inbuilt layer is the trust layer. And where DJLI is bringing the innovation to everyone, especially small medium enterprises, is where we offer this trust layer through our trust score. And that score enables trust on the internet. Imagine the friction which it can reduce, uh, it can reduce when organizations want to do business in the online world and you are able to trust the organizations very quickly. The amount of transactions which will move from physical transactions, delayed transactions, cumbersome, tedious transactions to real-time online immediate transactions is what the vision we are bringing. So our long-term vision is to enable the trust layer, be it private digital infrastructure or public digital infrastructure. And we would come in and we would help, especially starting with small medium enterprises because that's where the need is, uh, is the highest. Absolutely. I think adding the trust layer is the need for SME, and that's what you guys have been doing. So, uh, Shrikan, the fintech industry uh, is known for its uh, disruption of traditional uh, financial service. Uh, uh, so, uh, from your perspective, what major disruption do you foresee uh, shaping the future of fintech? Well, it's already happening around us, right? And one of the very interesting innovations is all about creating this open banking, open data, APIs. What has happened is so far, banks were man managing the entire value chain. So when I talk about value chain, it's customer interaction, customer servicing, and you're offering the product and end to end. So bank wanted to manage the, those interactions. Now, because of the APIs, what has happened is that uh, the journey has been broken down. You may start your journey on a a platform which is a wallet, right, or a payment platform, right? You hardly open a bank bank app. So there is a, a dis uh, assembly of this entire value chain which has happened, and that's where fintech have come in, and that has created tremendous opportunity. We also saw, uh, you know, my recent observation is that uh, some of these, of course, AI is becoming a very very important game. Mm -hmm. uh, it is actually going to make us think about, you know, how we uh, do some of these activities. It is going to have repercussions on the way human thinking is going to evolve for the next generation. Maybe not this generation, but you know, people who would rely on AI, uh, uh, you know, would would find it uh, <laughs> interesting to uh, build new skills. Yeah. I also see that blockchain is an area which was and, and purely leaving the crypto aside. Right? Uh, there are many views on crypto yeah. by regulators. Yeah. I'm not going in there. But purely on the blockchain side, I would see that there would there would be hybrid architectures which would emerge, where blockchain is solving for some critical challenges, and it is a premium service yeah. for certain specific challenges to be problems to be solved. But then you have a centralized and decentralized networks talking to each other over APIs. So there is there is tremendous opportunity. Quantum computing is another area which yes, yes. do not know. What is going to what it is going to do to AI? What it is going to do to multiple other uh, other industries? And that could be a big disruption which will come in. So all of these are not happening in isolation. Everything is moving uh, very very fast, and they are all correlated. Absolutely, and and I uh, I think Shrikant they require a lot of collaboration between uh, these fintech uh, companies with the traditional uh, financial institutes and regulators and and policy makers, you know, to to actually bring this kind of disruption. So, uh, if we got the, you know, the financial inclusion is a key goal for many fintech companies. How does uh, DGLI contribute to increasing the financial access 
especially in the region where traditional banking service may be limited. Absolutely. I think one of our agenda items is to help financial institutions to solve this inclusion problem, so help governments to solve this problem. We are operating at this juncture across India, Singapore, Philipp Philippines, and also looking at Malaysia and Vietnam. Uh -huh. If we think about the remote parts of the these regions, you will you will uh, you will see that internet is the uh, commodity which reaches everyone, and that is why most of these countries which I talked about have digital banking and digital yeah. bank digital only banks like Hastis. What we want to do is we want to work with financial institutions. We want to work with some of the supply chain companies to help them assess small medium enterprises mm -hmm. and those enterprises can become get a trusted tag from us mm -hmm. once they get a trusted tag the speed at which the trade and commerce can develop in those regions can be absolutely phenomenal and that's mm -hmm. that's our objective other use cases we are working and this is just not uh, trust is not just about giving a loan uh, it is also about uh, enabling the supply chain. Some of the industries we have seen, our our research tells us that some industries have very high defaults. For example, logistics has a high default. The trust score from DJLI can also help assess your customers, assess your suppliers, make sure that you have the right value chain across. We are talking to some of the insurance companies today who are going to be deciding the pricing mechanism based on the score which we offer them because traditionally insurance companies suffer a lot about making these pricing decisions and they have very limited data i mean you can see how little data we give to insurance companies mm -hmm. we are looking at trade organizations we are looking at investment organizations which will create these uh, use these reports and which will use these trust scores uh, for them to build on it so there is tremendous potential for financial inclusion across multiple use cases and it's just not about lending Financial inclusion has to be talk, thought through from a comprehensive access to finance and which includes insurance, which includes trade, which includes investments, uh, lending as well as payments. Okay. So now, uh, uh, quickly, uh, you know, I'm just uh, going to ask you something about your global footprint. You know, walk us through uh, the global uh, footprint and your business achievement over the past uh, uh, 12 to 18 months and uh, what in you, uh, you know, in, in your view, are the critical factors that have been uh, crucial for DGLI success in such a dynamic and complicated market? So one of the uh, main things, I would say milestones which we have achieved is being partner with MasterCard. Okay. And we actually were selected as part of the Start Path program and MasterCard realized uh, a lot of uh, opportunity in the SME space. So they launched the first ever cohort in 2023 and DJLI was selected as one of the top five companies across the world to be part of that SMB cohort. Okay. Now we are building deeper relationship with MasterCard. We are also looking at how can we leverage payment data for credit okay. decisions. How can that be helpful for us to create more accurate uh, trust score? And that collaboration is really important for us, very meaningful for us. And I was in for for the SME event uh, where in MBS, which MasterCard organized, we had a lot of senior leadership, customers of MasterCard across the region. So we, I would say one of the very important milestone is for us on, on that. Second is again, uh, you know, we, uh, you must have seen a few of the things on LinkedIn, but we got some good recommendations, good, good support from our customers in building uh, a good value, good a uh, brand for us, uh, DJLI is a brand uh, for the work which we have done for them. Across industries now, we are across countries, we are now operating in India as well as Singapore. We are expanding in Philippines and Vietnam based on the partners, even Malaysia. We got a lot of inquiries from Malaysia as well as Indonesia. So we are focused on the region as of now, but there are certain sectors which we are evaluating outside uh, and, and specifically in, in North America. Uh, specifically, one industry which is getting affected is the real estate rental segment. And that is an area where uh, some of our advisors have uh, mentioned that we can actually help those guys uh, by the trust score. So that's, it's, it, it looks promising, exciting. Now we have uh, 
other type of challenges to solve is like how do we meet the customer expectations how do we make sure that we build scale the team how do we get the automation in uh, so those are uh, good problems to have but again you know it's part of the part and parcel of the entrepreneur's life absolutely so uh, shikant uh, you know you talk about the ai uh, creditability assessment uh, rating you know which you guys have been doing and how is it different from the other ai uh, rating solutions which are there in the market i mean uh, so so you also mentioned about that you had a you know a big uh, breakthrough uh, with the uh, mastercard so is it that are you getting that uh, mastercard uh, subscriber access or the user access which is actually helping you to increase your footprint so you know just 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 a little bit of thoughts around these two once sure so let me first start with a very simple statement that we are all used to a word called credit score right and the challenge with the credit score and i keep saying this it's like driving the car by looking into the rear view mirror yeah because you are the moment the credit score is created you are actually it is stale because you are looking at the past data and you are looking at the financial data only and set of the rules which are there yeah. and it is rule based rule based so yes. by giving you know any expert by just looking at the data from uh the consumer can very easily say that you know hey what would be your credit score you know you can even predict the credit score right so the novelty in the credit scoring business and risk is is not it has not evolved as much okay as we would want to right because they also are setting playing an important role in the industry but what is happening uh, is there is a lot of alternate data which is coming in mm-hmm. so if you think about uh, you know it is lunch time so we can th- talk about a cake a three layered cake the first layer of the cake is about financial data everybody is doing financial data everybody is assessing doing the risk assessment based on the financial data now you think about the second layer of the cake which is non financial data alternative data okay what we have done is we have actually trained our model with a lot of non financial data okay and it has given us phenomenal advantage over companies who are just looking at financial data today almost 100% of the loans for smes are given by meeting in person which means that organizations while they say we need financial data they just don't believe completely in the financial data and a lot of decision making depends on the non financial data all we are doing is we are taking those signals pushing to ai and why ai because you know it is very hard for human mind to comprehend the new data and make this correlation or causal analysis for uh, some of the new data which is coming in which ai can do it beautifully so that is the second layer of the cake the third layer of the cake is forward looking score because if you think about uh credit score credit score is about your ability to pay in fact it is not even your ability to pay it's more about your uh past record of how how regularly you are paying what we are doing is we are creating a forward looking score we are talking about how what is the possibility of default by this company in future which means that we have to look at potential intent and integrity of the company and that is where some of the forward looking data which is industry specific data as well as geopolitical data geopolitical risk those come into play as the third layer of our ai training model so that's how we look at it and that's how we are uh, differentiated okay. from mastercard perspective definitely we've seen tremendous commitment and uh, we are uh, I- i'm truly impressed by the uh, commitment these people have uh, the organization level e- very senior level in terms of uh, driving some of the impact for smes and phenomenal research phenomenal information so i would say that is one of the uh, very very interesting partnerships to look for for us so ai yeah, give a more uh, comprehensive credit scoring uh, that's what i i decipher from the data conversation but uh, these credit scoring you know more comprehensive one which you just put it in three layers are been uh, accepted by these uh, traditional uh, banks uh, which follow the typical rules uh, you know set traditionally to them so that's a very interesting point and you know as i mentioned to you this is a this particular uh, suggestion i mean it's a recommendation engine yes. for the banks yeah and we can embed ourselves so we come as an embedded finance 
part of the journey with banks and we are very open for getting ourselves embedded where organization banks financial institutions are ready to reimagine the journey with us and that is that has given tremendous results for few of the organizations right okay I, it saves the overall time it kind of brings down the journey so today if i look at the approval rate the rate of approval for loans is somewhere between 1 is to 50 so banks get 50 applications and there is 49 applications which are dead weight on them before they get one loan which is in line with what they want now our objective is how do we reduce that 49 to maybe 30 to 10 right to 5 or maybe to 1 is to 1 right and that is where we play an important role and the banks and financial institutions who are aware of these things and they understand digitally a progressive organizations they are very open for these conversations with us on the other use cases which is supply chain assessment and some of those we don't need any form of uh, ratification from organization we we are able to do these assessments uh, and provide very valuable advice to these organizations who are worried about whether the customers will pay or not pay right uh, because credit is not just given by banks to the smes but credit is given by every organization to their customers and they have also relationship with the with the suppliers so all of these relationships uh, is something we want to establish based on the trust there and uh, that is where we want to play, play a bigger role i think uh, you guys are playing a more uh, critical role in the entire value chain so who's actually absorbing the risk uh, shikant in this attack is like you guys are doing the lot of assessment around it doing building up the credit scoring uh, if something goes wrong yeah who's absorbing the risk Well, absolutely it is uh, it, it's a very very important question right and in terms of the vision we wanted to establish this at least in the beginning uh, how we want to build this uh, model and how we want to position ourselves we look at uh, playing an advisory role i mean okay. it's very simple similar to what bcg would be paying mckick mckinsey would be playing a role uh, in giving the advice who are people I got my because we are not a financial institution. No, that's what I wanted to ask you because uh, you know when when you use the term AIB, it's like are we are we also absorbing the risk, which is which is very very important, you know, uh, in the entire uh, value chain. So, so for looking at uh, what are the trends and the advancement uh, you foresee in the BFSI sector, and how does uh, DGLI plan to stay ahead, uh, you know, at the forefront on these uh, developments? BFSI is one of the leading sectors, and you know it has created. Uh, tremendous innovation over a period of time that's what we see in singapore fintech festival uh, we see in multiple across the world right you see regulators are playing and finance touches everybody uh, so we need to and every industry i mean you talk about travel you talk about insurance everywhere you see finance plays uh, and banking plays a very important role so within bfsi we see that the collaboration between banks and fintech is going to be stronger because over a period of time banks are going to realize and they have already realized to a great extent that they cannot build everything in house yeah they will need to work in a very cohesive manner with small uh maybe startups maybe mid size companies but fintechs are already showing the way in in many ways right uh still on the lending side i would say that uh, nbfcs uh and as well as the new fintechs new age fintechs have a long way to go because the amount of loans which state bank of india or public sector banks issue uh, is is huge as compared to what the sector is going through so yeah. india has tremendous opportunity for fintech you see a lot of unicorns coming in 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 this uh, india has tremendous opportunity for fintech i see that uh, there are regulations are also coming in so rbi is very proactively bringing a lot of regulations and fintech will have tremendous opportunity over the next decade uh, in india and across southeast asia across the world absolutely so with this uh, we come to the end of this episode uh, thanks vikant for such an insightful session and we really had a pleasure interacting with you my pleasure and thank you for having me it's wonderful series so uh, pleasure to be here absolutely pleasure all us for more updates from cxo tv please like and subscribe to our channel